All right, we are continuing our Tim Burton series. Um, I do want to clarify, I'm only doing movies that he has directed. Um, that's kind of what I've decided to do, uh, because writing styles and producing is, is different than directing, uh, obviously. Um, so I've decided to focus when I do a director's thing on directing. If I happen to watch something that he has written, like technically Nightmare Before Christmas is not a Tim Burton movie, because he didn't direct it. I think he, he produced it, definitely. He might have written it, but I don't know. I don't know that for sure. That's just a guess. Um, so I'm not going to be watching that. In case anyone was curious, it's a common misconception. He did not direct that movie. But we are going to be talking about this classic that I haven't seen in quite a long time. Uh, I honestly forgot most of this movie. Um, but I was really happy to get to watch it again because I... Just was not only nostalgia, but also I just realized how good of a movie Edward Scissorhands is. Edward Scissorhands was released in 1990, so we're already in the 90s. That was fast. Awesome. It was written by Caroline Thompson and directed, of course, by Tim Burton. It stars Johnny Depp as Edward, it stars Winona Ryder as Kim, and Anthony Michael Hall as Jim, uh, in quite a surprising uh, role for him, but we'll get, we'll get there. Uh, no spoilers, the general idea is it's about this, like, creation, is what it really is, it's a creation like Frankenstein almost, um, of a human being from nothing. Like, the scientist is like, a human I must make, and then he makes this human. Um, and that is Johnny Depp. <laughs> um, and he uh, has a problem, and that is that his, like, creator died before he can give him hands. So he's stuck with these scissors for hands. Um, and then it's up to, uh, like, Winona Ryder's family to take him in and teach him how to live and do things. Turns out he's pretty good at, like, cutting hair and cutting hedges, so he does that for a while. Um, but I don't want to get into too much after that because it is kind of spoilery, but... Uh, he and Winona Ryder's character kind of, you know, uh, they, uh, they kind of fall in love with each other, which is my one problem with the movie. It's my one and only problem, and that's kind of uh, an issue due to the fact that it is the main plot of the film. Um, <laughs> but their relationship, while it felt like the chemistry was good, it just didn't feel like that was where the direction was, was taking us, you know? Like, it felt from the very, very beginning that Winona did not like Johnny, um, clearly by the end she does, but the transition from getting him and her to, like, to not like each other to liking each other just felt awkward, um, because they do it through, like, these events, right? Like, they're like, okay, now we can cut hedges, now we can cut hair, and now he's stabbing people on accident, like, it's just, like, there's almost, like, waves of plot that just work well by themselves, but they don't in like they don't actually add to the romantic elements of the film, which I really did enjoy. Like I liked the relationship between Winona and 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 Johnny at the end of the of the movie. I thought it was like, oh cool, I get it. It's this whole like I love you, but can't be, we can't be together kind of thing. But it felt weird getting there. It didn't feel natural getting to the actual good chemistry that they had. So that's like one big like negative to the film. But it's pretty much my only negative to the film. I do want to talk briefly about Anthony Michael Hall, because I love Anthony Michael Hall. I think he's great. Um, he's very good in this, except he, it's a very different role from, for him. Uh, like, he did, like, The Breakfast Club. He's, like, the nerdy boy. You can't see, but I pointed to my my Breakfast Club poster that I have. Um, he plays, like, the nerdy character. He's, like, he's nerdy, he doesn't do anything wrong, and all that kind of thing. Um, and this is very different for him. He plays this, like, punk uh, this, like, punk, bad guy-esque kind of guy. Um, I felt that his character was a little bit too much of a caricature, so it felt too much like he was imitating a bad guy instead of, like, he is a bad guy. Um, but that's okay. Anthony Michael Hall, I don't know why, but he's just, he's not a very good actor, but I like him. <laughs> like, he's great in The Breakfast Club. I liked him in, like, 16 Candles, Weird Science, all that, all the John Hughes stuff. I love it. But then he does this, and he does, like, Halloween Kills, and I'm like, ugh. Maybe you should stop. <laughs> um, but his character was fun, regardless. It, not very well done, but it was fun. Um, but what really makes this film pop, of course, is the directing by Tim Burton. And also, I will say, the set design, the costume design, all of that is just wonderful. I think this is my favorite score uh, so far from, uh, who is it, Danny Elfman that he works with. Um, it's just such a really fun score. I like it a lot. 
I think it's Danny Elfman. I could be wrong. I'm pretty confident, though. Um, really, really, really good score there. Like, excellent, excellent, excellent score. Um, the colors in this movie are, they're immaculate. We go from the dark and stormy kind of castle looking area where Edward lives and we go down to the, to the, to this town and it's colorful and interesting. And I think it's supposed to reciprocate the way that Edward's feeling, you know, he's up stuck in this castle. He's sad. He wants to go, you know, understand people, be with people. He wants to be a person. And then he's invited down into the town and he kind of gets to this point where he's allowed to kind of be with others. Um, and it's, it makes him happy and hence the colors and I thought that was really cool the color scheme and the set design and, and the mise-en-scene is really good like it just looks visually pleasing the use of miniatures as I said I would mention in most of my temperate movies is clear and apparent it's pretty obvious that the castle is a miniature most of the time um, and that's really cool it worked really well it looks really cool um, so good for that um, I'm happy that that's still working for him in 1990 we'll see how much of that he uses later on but uh, yeah I mean this movie's just really freaking fun it's on I think HBO Max is where I found it so check it out there if you're interested I had a huge like I just had, I had a great time watching this movie I did not think I was going to I was excited to watch it but I didn't think I was gonna love it I was wrong I do love this movie I think it's my favorite Tim Burton so far I'm gonna go ahead and give it an A have you guys seen Edward Scissorhands? Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about it. I, again, I had a huge amount of, of, of fun watching this. Uh, again, please, please go watch it. It's good. Um, I feel like this is one that people don't go back to a whole lot nowadays, and I don't know why. It's hilarious. I do love the Timothy Chalamet version, though. I will, I will say that from the Super Bowl. Uh, that was funny. I did like that quite a bit. So, anyway, check it out if you're interested. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. I love all of you. Uh, one thing you can do to help me is to subscribe. So consider doing that. Also subscribe to Burnside Boys. It's Burnside Boys with a Z. Uh, that's my short film channel. So go check that out. And subscribe here so you can find your next movie at Robert's Reviews.